In this screencast, I'll introduce you to the multi-resolution feature in Object2VR. Typically, the more pixels, the greater detail that can be observed within an image. In an interactive movie, this detail can be seen simply by zooming in. But there's one disadvantage to this. More pixels equals larger file size. In order to make the image download friendly, we need to break the image down into small chunks rather than keeping it as one whole image. To do this, we use multiple levels of resolution and tiled images. To start, load your images into Object2VR or open an existing project, and then add a flash output format and open the multi-resolution tab. Next, enable the feature by clicking here, and once you do this, you'll be asked if levels should be automatically added. Choosing yes will do just that, and you'll see the level section populated with as many levels needed until the lowest level is equal to or lower than the level tile size in the basic settings. Levels are essentially multiple images at different resolutions of the original image. For example, this image has a width of 4,032 pixels and a height of 3,800, and this would be the first level. In Object2VR, we work with just the width, since the height is determined by the aspect ratio. The next level would be a pixel width of 2016, and so on and so forth until the last level. You can think of these images as levels of a pyramid, the bottom or base level has the most pixels and is the highest resolution, while the top of the pyramid is the lowest resolution. The pixel width of the image and your own personal taste will determine the amount of levels to add. If you'd rather add your levels manually, just choose No when the Add Levels dialog pops up. Then, in the Levels section, keep clicking Add until you have the desired amount of levels. Each level is the half of the previous, and the widths can be edited. The next three columns lets us customize how each level is loaded. It's possible that all levels could be embedded within the SWIFT, but this would create a rather large file that can take a while to download. But if you need to pass this on to a client for review, having all the levels embedded could be convenient. Levels that are selected to load at startup will be downloaded once the player loads, while the other option is to decode the images once the player loads. To properly display the image, the JPEG tiles need to be converted to the Flash internal file format, which is bitmap. The drawback here is that it uses up a lot of memory, and because of this, we suggest keeping at least embed or decode and load at startup selected for the lowest resolution and these are automatically selected when levels are added in the beginning. Now let's take a look at the basic settings, starting with the level tile size. This sets the subtile size of each level. The default is 512 pixels, and it's a good number to start with. But to avoid uneven tiles, make every level evenly divisible by the level tile size. So, for example, here's a tile that's made up of 16 separate tiles. Using the numbers from our project, this tile is 4,032 pixels wide, and each subtile is 252 pixels wide, creating an even tiling. If the level tile size isn't evenly divisible, then the tiling will be uneven, with smaller tiles. And this isn't a big problem, but such small files can waste resources and slow down the downloading process. And of course, finding good tiling could be difficult if a common denominator for both the width and the height can't be found. So, in this case, we suggest trying to create even tiling just for the width. And back in the project now, I'll change the level tile size to 504 pixels to match my lowest level. And just something to remember here, once multi-resolution is enabled, the image width in the settings tab is ignored. But image quality is not. Here you can customize the name and convention of the output of files. The default template puts all the tiles in one folder called tiles, and each file will be named according to these placeholders. Percent %c is the cube face number, percent %r represents the levels in reverse or from highest resolution to lowest, percent %l would give the levels in order from lowest resolution to highest, 
and percent Y and X are for the tile coordinates. There are also a few other templates to choose from. This template includes the output file name and will give a unique name to the tiles folder preventing accidental overwriting with multiple projects. The next one will put the tiles in multiple folders and because the placeholders are uppercase, the numbering order will begin with 1. All lowercase placeholders will start the numbering order with 0. In every template, you can edit the name of the folder. You can also create your own file naming using these placeholders. If you're using already existing tiles, make sure that their file names match what's here so that Object2VR knows where to locate them. And in case you forget what these placeholders represent, you can always find their meanings in our documentation. Next is the option to generate files. If you already have the files from a previous output and no changes to the level settings have been made, you won't need to generate them again. Now on to the advanced settings. The first option is pixel overlap, and when this is selected, the tiles will overlap by one pixel to avoid visible seams in the image. The next two options allow you to set how much memory the host computer will use for downloading the tiles and for storage of the decoded bitmap images. Download queue size lets you determine how many tiles are downloaded from the server at one time. The default is 20 tiles and it's a good number to start with, but if you're finding the download of tiles to be too slow, you can try lowering this number. The final option is the decode queue limit. This determines how many tiles are decoded to bitmap at a time. If you're finding the host computer is stuttering when trying to show tiles, it could be that the decoding process is requiring too much processing. For most cases, the default should be fine, but you might find the need to change this. The setting depends on the tile size. If the tiles are small, try increasing this, and alternatively, if the tiles are large, lower the setting. And that's it for the advanced settings. And remember that all the defaults for the multi-resolution feature will provide good results, but sometimes the need to have more control over the project is necessary. So now I'll output the project, and when I zoom in, you'll see that the image is first blurry, and once the levels download, the image becomes clear. Now if I rotate it to the other side, we'll see that the images load as they are needed. Finally, take a look at the outputted files. Here's the folder named Tiles, and within it are all the tiles that make up each level. Also, when you upload this to a server, don't forget to add the Swift, HTML, and JavaScript files along with the Tiles folder. And that's it. Thanks for watching.